All right, just got done clearing the fence off because uh, what the pigs do is <clears throat> they root up down close to the ground or whatever, and then the dirt and the sticks and the grass and everything leaves get on the bottom strand of the fence and grounds it out. <clears throat> and I had this uh, tester here. Let me get it out of my pocket. But I had this uh, tester here that I ordered from uh, Premier One. And uh, what you do is you put the test on the fence. And let's see. What you do is you put the test on the fence and you push the little button. And then it'll light up to let you know. Can you see that? It'll light up to let you know what your, what your power is on your fence. Right now it's hitting on 4,000 kilovolts or whatever. But uh, Yeah, it should be enough to keep them in. It's kind of hard when you're going through the forest because uh, if I'm on just open pasture, I can get it on 8,000 kilovolts or whatever. But uh, when you're going through the forest like this or whatever, and there's all type of stuff, all type of sticks and grass and leaves and stuff, it's hard to get it on 8,000. But 4,000 should be enough to keep them in. But yeah, I just went around. I had to get the, that pile of sticks because they had pushed the pile of sticks out of the woods up on the fence over here. And you see it still kind of bowed out a little bit. But uh, they had pushed it over, and it was almost to the point to where they could get out. But I got that out of there. There's some more sticks in there and stuff, too, but I don't have the energy to get it out of there today. I get it out of there another day once they push it up. But, uh, yep, so got the pasture over here. And then once I get them out of there, I'm going to move them on down to here or whatever. And then once I move them from there... I'm gonna probably put them over here. And then after this section, let's see. After this forest section right here, it starts to open up a little bit down here into the pasture area. So it opens up once you get down here or whatever. And as you can see, the grass is really not long enough right now for them anyway because right now what they would do is they just root everything up and have it just bare dirt out here. So I want to wait until that grass gets up a little bit higher in my open pastures or whatever. And uh, once the grass gets up in the open pastures a little bit higher, I'd be able to send them out in the open pastures or whatever. But yeah, down here on the farm today doing a little work. Excited that it's, it's springtime. The grass is growing, birds are chirping, everything is turning green, ground is drying out. It's like a lot of people don't raise pigs during the winter months. They don't overwinter pigs because it's hard to make it through the winter. The winter has, has a bunch of challenges that it presents when you're raising hogs. But we face those challenges. We made it through the winter time and it's springtime now. And we, we better. See the pigs over there drinking out of their water barrels. But we better now that we made it through the winter or whatever with these pigs. Because we learned so much. And it's like it's going to be so much more easier now in the summertime. Now that we've braved it through the hardest part of, of raising hogs. Yeah, but I got these water tanks over here. Those are 55 gallons a piece. And I used to put one in here. But they were drinking too fast. So I started putting two. 55-gallon uh, tank, so that means we have 110 gallons of water for 15 pigs, and that'll last about two weeks. It'll pretty much last until I get ready to move them again. And uh, but I'm gonna go on top of them off today since I'm down here. I think it's supposed to rain uh, for the rest of next week, so I want to go on, get the truck down here to the to the back because the pig pastures are about five acres to the back of our property or whatever, and 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 part of it is gravel. But most of it is a dirt road or whatever. And, uh, you know, you can get stuck if it gets too wet during the wintertime. But as long as it's summer or whatever or spring and the ground is hard, you don't have to worry about getting stuck. But I'm going to go ahead now and try to get them some water, get all the water topped off, get the, get the, uh, the boar, the male pig at the bottom of the hill, get his water topped off, get them fed and everything. And uh, I'll probably head out after that. But, yeah, it's IAG Farms and... It's all about God. We're trying to work with our hands so we can have something to give those who have need. Jesus' name. Yes, yeah, so I got the 
water flowing now to the uh, these barrels that I'm filling up. <clears throat> Got about 200 gallons of barrels here that I'm getting full. And the uh, water is coming from up there on the truck in that 275 gallon tank to here. And as you see, you can see that's a pretty good, good flow there. But uh, I'm filling these tanks up. Fill all three of these up. Like I said, it's, it's going 55, 55, 110, about 165, 165 gallons of uh, water that I'm going to have down here. So whenever they run out in the pens or whatever, because I got, I have 110 gallons for these pigs over here on pasture. And I have 110 gallons down there at our mouth where our male pig is at or whatever. So got two barrels down there, two barrels down there, and I got three on standby that's going to be full whenever they run out or whatever, just in case we're not able to get the old farm truck back here. And uh, <clears throat> we off grid down here on this, this farm property for right now. We plan on getting some water and uh, electricity hooked up eventually or whatever. But for now, <clears throat> we just doing it off grid and uh, we use a generator for power and uh, we bring down these big water totes or whatever to bring water. We just follow the water from our our miniature base in the city or whatever and bring it down here but uh yeah everything's going good today so far or whatever no pigs were out uh fence was up and try to get this done so i can get on back and do some things around the miniature base we planted <clears throat> about 50 pounds of potatoes yesterday and i want to get back and get some mulch on them or whatever and kind of build the soil up so they can grow into that that mulch or whatever but then tomorrow we got prayer walk. <clears throat> We're gonna be ministering around the neighborhood and the community <clears throat> around our ministry base or whatever because that's what it's all about. It's all about getting outside of the four walls of the church and uh, or the four walls of the building because the church is not something that has walls. You know, the church is us, the people, the body of Christ. The Bible says that the spirit of God doesn't doesn't dwell in temples made with men's hands. And, uh, you know, that was a shadow in the Old Testament when they made the temple, when Solomon built the temple or whatever. But now in the New Covenant, under the New Testament or whatever, under the blood of Jesus, you know, uh, we are that temple. And the Holy Spirit lives inside of us once we believe in Jesus. So we don't need, you know, there's nothing wrong with buildings, you know, as places of worship. But we have to understand that those buildings are not the church. They are not churches. You know, they are just buildings used to 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 be a covering for our our gatherings of faith but <clears throat> like i said we're gonna get out into the communities tomorrow or whatever and try to spread the love of jesus as best as we can and uh i'm just looking forward to what the lord gonna do waiting on these water tanks to fill up <clears throat> that's gonna take a little minute but you know no need of being in a rush Yeah, I got to move to this new pasture in here or whatever, this forest section. And I'm going to keep on moving them down through the forest or whatever until I get them down to the pasture down there or whatever. Let me take y'all down here and show y'all where where they were at. <clears throat> show y'all this progression and, progression and rotation. So before I moved them there, they were here. And before, let me get up under this electric fence. And before I, before they were there, they were they were here, and uh, they they had this rooted up pretty good or whatever because these the this pasture here in the forest and this pasture here and this other one I'm gonna show you they were a uh, winter paddocks and we left them there you know we left them here on these paddocks probably a month at a time and uh this was the first pasture winter paddock where they were at and you can see that on this winter paddock the grass is growing back we had to come in and smooth this one out the grass was growing back here as well but i had to come back and smooth it out with the tractor or whatever so you just want to patch Yeah, it's like once uh <clears throat> it rains good or whatever, 
It's gonna be little patches of grass like that that's gonna pop up. But you can see them here and there. You can see little blades of grass here and there. I don't know if you can see that or not. But there's a lot of those little blades of grass uh, around in this area. Like I said, it was more grass here before. But I had to smooth it out because they had little root holes or whatever all around. But so they were over there last before I moved them to the new pasture. They were over here, but they started out over here or whatever. 